Already in this course, I've mentioned several different variants of ransomware. And just as we have a huge array of malware in general as the broader category of malicious software, there are many different ransomware variants as well, and they do operate in different ways. Let's go and take a look at how one of the most malicious pieces of ransomware at the time of recording operates. In early 2016, we saw the emergence of the Lockie ransomware variant. And Lockie has proven to be particularly effective, in part because it is actually very good at encrypting files. It does exactly what encryption should do. It makes the file inaccessible unless you have the decryption key. When Lockie infects a machine, one of the first things it does is loads itself into memory and deletes itself. So now it's gone from the file system, but it's still running there on the machine. It then goes to work. And one of the first things it does is drops down to your documents and starts encrypting those on the local disk. This is how we most often think of ransomware trawling through the hard drive, finding files that match certain patterns. And most ransomware variants are looking for specific file types, documents, images, videos, files that will be of value to the user. So it warrants paying the ransom, but not files that are required to actually keep the operating system running. Because after all, the attacker does want the machine to keep working so that the victim can go through the process of ultimately paying the ransom. Now, Lockheed doesn't just encrypt the local disk. It also works its way through network storage and it encrypts those files as well. Think of what this means in the enterprise. Network storage is where most company sensitive files are. They're sitting out there on file shares, accessible via desktop machines. That's inevitably how we interact with them. But by the same token, that's precisely how ransomware can interact with them. If it can find files on the network, and the identity that it's executing under has the rights to actually modify those files, then Lockie works through and encrypts them. But it goes further than that. It also moves on to the VSS snapshots. So this is what we would normally use to roll back versions of files, and it deletes them. Obviously, it does this because it's trying to remove one of the avenues that the victim would have for recovery. That shadow copy service is there so that if a file is corrupted or lost or damaged in some other way, you can roll back to another version. But that's exactly what ransomware doesn't want you doing. So a product like Locky is smart enough to remove that avenue and force the victim towards actually paying the ransom. It goes further than that. It then goes and sets the desktop wallpaper to an image with instructions about demanding the ransom. We'll have a look at just what that looks like in just a moment. And finally, it also drops a text file on the file system, again, with instructions about payment. That text file then appears next to encrypted files in the hope that the victim will open it up, follow the instructions and pay the ransom. So what's interesting about what you see here is just how well thought out the software is. It's not just about encrypting files. It's about removing the avenues to recover from the attack and then helping the user for want of a better term, by providing them instructions on payment. Here's what it looks like after Lockie's been through a system. This would normally be your files. It'd be documents and spreadsheets and images. Instead, what we've got is we've got a whole bunch of hashes in place of file names and a .lockie extension. You'll note here that the dates on all these are identical, but the file sizes are different. Inevitably, this particular machine had a whole bunch of different files of different sizes, and then Lockie went through and encrypted them all in one go, hence the same date. The files are still there. The content is still there. It's just strongly encrypted. This is a pretty common pattern. Here's another one. This is Roku. It's a similar sort of deal, except in this case, it's kept the original file name, added the .roku extension, and as you can see towards the bottom of that screen cap, provided instructions on how to unlock, which of course inevitably involves paying money. Let's take a look at the instructions that Lockie provides. Here's a machine infected with Lockie. And we can see here that they're referring to RSA and then go on to reference AES-128 ciphers. That won't mean much to most people that get infected with Lockie. But it doesn't have to, it just has to sound intimidating enough that they don't feel they're left with many choices. 
But the problem is they're also right because those of us that do understand how effective AES encryption is realize that retrieving any data without the decryption key is going to be exceptionally difficult. Of course, they go on to say that decryption is only possible with the private keys and the decryption program, which is on our secret server. We've then got a bunch of Tor hidden service links after that, or more specifically, clear web services that will route through to Tor. Your average user isn't going to be able to connect directly to Tor. So in order to improve the usability of the system and increase their chances of being paid the ransom, they're making it easy for people. They do go on to provide instructions on how to obtain Tor if you do want to connect directly to the Onion service. And finally, they provide your unique ID and you can see that represented throughout this screenshot here. This is important because this machine does have a unique private key required in order to unlock its files. And all of this is managed centrally by command and control servers. The nature of the internet and the way ransomware is distributed means that you're going to get people from all over the world getting infected. So Lockie actually localizes the instructions. They've gone to the effort of translating the whole thing into multiple different languages in order to increase their chances of being paid the ransom. Even the Wikipedia links to RSA and AES have been localized, in this case into Japanese. It's worth taking a moment to consider the parallels with normal commercial grade software, the focus on usability, the language localization. Ransomware today is not only increasingly sophisticated, it's increasingly usable. All of this brings us through to the point of actually paying the ransom. Let's go on and take a look at how that works.